Hello. Here stands a Dutchman, as Dutch as can be. I'm very tall, I'm blonde, I'm loud, <laughs> but I'm open and friendly and not all that threatening. So, But here also stands a pretty tragic figure. I once fell in love with the beautiful sport of climbing, but I live in those rainy flatlands near the North Sea, where the only nature is rain and winds, as far from any mountain as you can imagine. Hello, my name is Gert, I'm from Groningen, that's Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> I run a climbing center by the name of Bukes, and I'm a 40-something, a typical child of the early 80s. Back then, it was the end of big ideologies, everything was black. And I had no other ideal when I grew up than to live a life of personal happiness. But to be happy, you have to find yourself first. You have to know who you are. My idea worth spreading today is my personal story and how I wandered around in those flat Dutch mountains looking for directions. And how I had to learn to put myself at the center of my own universe. And the result of that is, well, that crazy tower. In other words, how an ordinary life can be made special by making it personal. Personal. <laughs> personal living, that's my theme. To be honest and able to feel. To be connected to your inner self. And to be at peace with the world around you. That's what I call happiness. But how happy are we actually? Eh? A lot of people do not wonder at all, but do you realize that when we are born, we on average have about 30,000 days to live? That will make you 80 years old, 30,000 days. If you take stock at the end of your days, how many of those days were good days, were happy days? To me, that's what it's all about. How many happy days do you collect? And of course, happiness can be pursued in many, well, indecent ways. If you're a selfish bastard, then you may think you're happy cruising around in your Maserati, but you will still be thought of as a selfish bastard. Nice going. So, connecting to yourself, taking care of the world around you, is that the program for happiness? Well, this is not an American quick fix story with a 10 point plan for success or anything like that. No, this is a down to earth Dutch story. And no quick fixes here. Everyone has to follow its own path. But most of us probably go through similar phases. And some of us, well, create ending up their own mountain or some other bubble. What about all this climbing stuff? I mean, climbing to me is a metaphor for life. You embark on a journey with all your limitations. You never quite know what's going to happen. And death may always be lurking from forgotten corners. It's you may think you're in it for the summit, that reaching the summit will make you happy, but it isn't. And you may think that success will make you a better person, but it won't. It's all about the experience. It's all about the commitment you make to try. And it's all about being the best you can be. There are the diehards, of course, for whom the summit is sacred. Those are the true professionals, the hardcore, the real athletes. Well, good luck to them. Because you may have climbed the highest mountains in the world, but what can you tell us about happiness? What was the price that you had to pay? How many things did you not do because you were so single-mindedly focused? Probably you were not much fun to the people around you. And why should coping strategies of extremists be of interest for us ordinary people, humbly trying to combine so many competing goals? Maybe my story, the one of a failed alpinist, does a better job. Because when I was 17, I really wanted to be a hardcore alpine climber. I had a fire burning inside of me, and I thought about climbing all the time and a lot more than I thought about girls. I was the nerdy boy, dreaming about freedom and adventure. And I set my aims high. And I did some good climbing, well, but my God, what was I scared all the time. And being and becoming a hardcore alpine climber was one of the first things I failed in. I'm too sensitive, I guess. I have to rest and feed myself somewhat decent. And if you want to be an ace climber, it helps, really helps if you don't mind eating shit. And if you don't... <laughs> and if you spend endless nights shivering in bivouacs with smelly men. 
it became clear that I had to forget about my real hardcore ambitions. I, I was definitely not focused enough. And I'm simple too much of a pussy, probably. <laughs> but maybe I was the typical teenager, full of big dreams, but rather unsure about himself. But if not a hardcore alpine climber, who was I? I decided to focus on my study, international law. But being a lawyer is playing games, working with and within the rules, and that definitely did not turn me on. So after graduation, I got a job in the gas industry, the energy business. I became the man in the suit. It looked like the perfect start for a good career, and I should have been happy, but the work was boring. And believe me, I remember myself sitting in my office on sunny days watching outside, and I could only think one thing. You've got only one life, my boy. This can't be it. The people were nice enough, but they never showed their inner self, so I had nothing to connect to and I felt lost. So I quit. There went the good career. But well, hey, work is identity, work is meaning. You've got to do something in life, so what to do? So at long last, I turned to myself and I decided I wanted to be a political scientist at a university. Interesting discussions with clever intellectuals, a good glass of red wine. <laughs> my thing, I thought. But I found myself back alone in my office. I wrote tons of stuff. It became more and more abstract. It went nowhere, and it certainly didn't give me any direction. So I failed again. Was I destined for failure in society, or what? Or maybe I was the typical 20-something, having trouble choosing between too many options. Anyway, I had no clue what to do. During that time, every now and then, I helped a friend of mine. He, had this, he made climbing holds out of polyester, and he had this big dream about a climbing center in Groningen. He was everything I was not. He was a technician, very focused and practical, and, and I was, well, totally the opposite, basically. We were complimentary. That was a good thing. So we sat in the pub and drank a lot of beer. Lots. And we were endlessly talking about this stupid climbing center of his. <laughs> to be finally able to talk about something else, I decided to make a business plan. Let's get busy. So he would know for sure why it could never work. But one thing led to another, and somewhat to my surprise, the climbing center became a reality. And after some faked market research and, well, an apparently effective sales pitch, we went to the bank, at the bank we got a huge loan, and all of a sudden we were in business together. As it turned out to be, he had a big dream and I had a plan to make it through. But it was all fine by me, it gave me some direction, and it sounds a bit sad, but I got kind of into it by accident. In my personal life, it was just like that. I had a girlfriend, she loved me very much, and we got two kids. Because at certain points, that's more or less what you do, I thought. <laughs> Basically, because I couldn't figure out what big dream fitted me, life had taken over. And all of a sudden, my life was full of responsibilities. And I'd better face up to them. So I was a father, and I managed the climbing center on my own because my friend has withdrawn himself from the daily routines, and I totally made myself slave of my own business. I was everyone's friend and support. I was the Gert made of foam, sponge Gert, always nice and friendly. But well, that only went well for some time, of course. Yeah. And then I started to break down. 90-hour work weeks, failing marriage, um, Still trying to make everyone happy but myself. Maybe I was the typical 30-something. <laughs> anyway, I lost myself in other people's agendas and a downward spiral. After three years when my second son was born, me and my wife split up. I knew for sure uh, I wanted to take my 50% share of the care of the kids. And suddenly I was a single dad. I bought a house that I had to renovate, so I lived in an empty house with no doors, no furniture. I was overworked, burned out, and I definitely felt I was going down the drain. Because the characteristic of foam is that it's dense and rebounds, but if it gets overheated and overstressed, it just falls apart, and it's useless. It felt as if I was to fail again, but this time, of course, that was not an option. The stakes were too high and I couldn't chicken out. But I know one thing for sure, my old strategies were not working anymore. 
In Chinese, the character for chaos also means opportunity. And I remember me sitting in this empty house with a baby in my arms and a toddler on my laps. I we watched Sesame Street. This is my life, I thought. And then it actually felt pretty okay. Because when everything breaks down and you think it all falls apart, you have to focus on what's important and to concentrate on what really counts and take responsibility. And this time it was pretty clear. Now the bottom line was, I was a father. And I'd better be a damn good one because these two hadn't asked to be born. And so I had to get my shit together. And all of a sudden, it felt easy. And it meant I had to reconnect to myself. But how? That's always another question. Normally I'd done it through climbing, but now I was way too busy to climb. And climb had become a bit of work anyway, so, so what I did, I went partying. <laughs> Letting it all out on the dance floor. <laughs> So there I was on the dance floor, raving all night long. And <laughs> welcome to the 24-hour party, people. And it worked after a while. <laughs> Freedom, I guess, that's what I was looking for. And that brings me back to climbing, in a way. Because forget a rope, forget a heroism, all this stuff. That's not what it's all about. It's about the sense of freedom and the sense of space that you want to experience. I decided to reinvent Bukes and make it truly my own and give my own personal mark. I wanted people to feel that freedom and to live their own adventure. Because that's all I'm selling, space, opportunity, and good coffee. I invite them to create their own experience, so to speak. And I don't want to make a Disney thing out of it, because it's exciting enough as it is. And I started to do things differently. I learned to delegate. I hired young, enthusiastic people who could do the daily work much better than I could. And I focused on the big picture and the fun stuff, and it worked, because for years, Bukes had drained the energy out of me, and now it was starting to give lots of energy back. Because that, what's it all about? It's a climbing center. I mean, and on a small scale, and that may be of interest, it represents an idea, because this is a time where you and you and you and you all have a lot of different roles in life, and most of the times we are pretty stressed out. And climbing is just one of those things that helps you to reconnect to yourself because it's about committing to your own emotions and it's about personal growth for what it's worth, but you need it. As I said, I began to blossom again, but I still was quite busy and I missed, well, the great outdoors, so to speak. I long ago accepted that I would never move to the Alps. There were too many fun people in Groningen. So there it was, the mountain had to come to me to make it personal. This was my plan. Huge tower, a couple of rocks, my own mountain in that flat land. So I wanted my mountain, or better, I wanted something that would give people around me all those emotions that I had while climbing on real rock and faraway places, the excitement, the fear, the adventure. The highest climbing wall I knew of was 34 meters. And well, of course, we had to top that, uh, because let's not kid each other, it's always a bit of a testosterone thing, stuff like this. So we made it 37 meters. So you want to be able to say mine is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> but as it turned out, it seems to be the tallest purpose-built climbing tower in the world. But that's not important. To me, it symbolizes freedom. And thank God to a lot of people around me, it symbolizes the same thing, so we can share. I think it's beautiful, because the two key elements that form who I am, my kids and the climbing center, came across my path more or less by accident. Well, once I was standing in those flat Dutch mountains, and there were no obvious summits in sight, and I was lost. But I committed to goals that I stumbled across, and I was able, luckily, to truly make it my own. And Bukes is testimony to basically what I learned along the way. That your personal experiences are at the heart of who you are. And if you dare to commit to those personal experiences, then with an open mind and a good heart, you may probably be able 
to shape the world around you into truly your own world. And for me, that's the key to a happy life. For the good of yourself and for the people around you. Oh well, this was my story. It was an adventure in itself telling it. And I'm sincerely grateful that you would listen. But remember, how many days have you got left from those 30,000? And how about your own happiness? Thank you very much. Thank you.